welcome back to the channel. We're going to be going over Mesh-tastic first time setup for iOS. In this tutorial, I'll be going through and using my iPad. You can use an Apple iPod or an iPhone of any generation, as long as you can download the Mesh-tastic app from the App Store. So unlike Android, you'll have to get this through the dedicated store. Once that's installed, then you're good to go. That means that you're going to have to have an account. Unfortunately, that's that's the minimum of being able to have an Apple account. Sign in, and then from there, you can install the app, and then you'll be able to see, once you click into it, the different devices that are around you. If you've already connected to a device, you may have to go through and forget it, which we will go over. Otherwise, you can click this big old button that says connect to a new radio. It's going to go through and say, hey, here's the Bluetooth pin code. Now, I'm going through and setting this up. There have been people talking about how they've had issues connecting their devices to the TT Go badges, which is what we're going to be using for the Darknet badges for this year at DEF CON. So, first thing we need to do and set up is to go in and choose our region. We're going to click the United States. We're using the 915 megahertz radio. And then from there, we're going to hit save. Anytime you make a change to these, you're going to have to save it and it's going to reboot the TT Go device. So after this comes back up, it'll show the Mesh-tastic sign and then it'll do the status screen. From here, it says that it's subscribed to the default Mesh. So if we go click the messages in the bottom left-hand corner, we can see the primary channel that there is nothing in the channel right now. So we're going to grab a secondary device so that we can try to start messaging and see being sent from the yellow badge. The blue badge should see this. And unfortunately, it's not seeing it right now. So we're going to go through some steps and troubleshoot what might be the issue here. So we're going to try, okay, maybe there's just a single hop that there's an issue. We can see we're 62% charged. This is a unique screen because they don't have this on the Android side. But when you're connected to your device, let's go ahead and tell it to give it a reboot. And you can actually do this in the app, which is pretty awesome. So if you scroll down on this section on the screen, you can actually go down and click the reboot button, which will send a remote signal to reboot your own device. Once you do that, it'll take it a minute to go through and reboot. It's usually pretty quick. It'll reconnect when it's got that green circle with the Wi-Fi looking antenna in the top right hand section. We're going to do another, this is a test text out. We're going to hit it. And again, we've got the trying to, or waiting for acknowledgement message. And it's still not going through, which is strange. So let's go over to the settings and we're going to go check a couple more things here. And now it says this is a test that popped up. It just took it a minute. But if you go into the app settings, we can actually tell, toggle off the shared location that's using the GPS from your device shared to your badge. If you want to be more private, turn that setting off. Otherwise, it'll go through and send that. From there, you can go through and name your device. You can go through other settings here. But now we're back in nodes. Let's go ahead and give another message test after we've done the reboot and see if it shows anything. And sometimes it can take a little bit because it's the long form. So these being right next to each other, my uh, device actually disconnects the yellow one in the top right hand corner. We can actually see this as well in the top corner of the iPad screen. It's now reconnected and it still says this is a test over on the blue badge. So the ding dong text did not go through. Okay, so if this is the case, here's the process to go through and do. Make sure your Bluetooth is on, which we can see it's on here. We're going to go into our settings and we're going to forget, we're going to go over to the Bluetooth and we're going to forget this current device. So this is Meshtastic 8B10, forget device. We click it. From there, I went through and clear, cleared out everything else as well. I force closed the Meshtastic app and a few other apps that were running in the background just in case. And then from there, I reopened Meshtastic application. And once you, I'm also going to do one more reboot with my device as well. So toggle it to the right, it's gonna boot up. Now, the interesting thing is that with this current version of the board, if you have power applied to it, doesn't matter if you're toggled on or off the switch, it's always gonna be powered on. When you toggle this to the right, it's going to turn things on. If you toggle it to the left, that means it's gonna turn off. So we're gonna to try to reconnect to this guy now that we've rebooted. I had sideswiped here and then it says, oh, let's get this new Bluetooth pairing code. So we'll retype it in. 
And this is a unique code every time that it tries to pair. So from there, it looks like it's connected. Great, let's give this thing another try. From there, we'll put this up here in this top corner. We'll go over to messages, select a contact. We're gonna be using just the default public message board. So we're gonna go here and type in hello. And then we need to press that little blue circle button right there to actually send out the text. And it says waiting for acknowledgement, but when we actually grab the other badge, it actually says hello already. So it does now say acknowledged here in the corner versus waiting to be acknowledged. So sometimes your message goes through and sometimes it doesn't. It seems a little flaky and I'm not sure if that's the app or if there's something else going on. So right now we're using uh, the current versions as of July 14th. When I recorded the video it was July 10th. So from there, we can see if we click just the individual badge, we can do a private text to it and it went through just fine. We switch back over to the primary channel to where it should be a public text to everybody. We'll do public text, hit that button, and we can see it immediately goes through. So could have just been a fluke or a Bluetooth connectivity issue. Everything's working well now. From here, let's deep dive into the Meshtastic settings. Now, there are a lot of cool different things that you can actually jump in and do here. First off, at the very top where it says app settings, you've got a name, which is where I'd put your agent's name. Then you go, your phone GPS is connected, that's glurried out, and that share location is a toggle on or off. This is the default channel for sharing the code. This is where you can name your device. So your name of your device can be different than your user, so your mileage may vary there. Um, from there, I'm just gonna go through and label this since this is the yellow badge that I'm using. It's iPad yellow, just to make it easy. You can change the short name, but it's only gonna be the last four of the MAC address. So just leave it as is. From there, every time that we save a new setting, it's gonna take a reboot to the badge. And after it comes back, then we'll move on to the other settings. Looks like the badge is almost rebooted. And this is in real time, so this doesn't take very long for it to reboot. Let's go down to the user. We've done that already. You can go into Laura, set your region, the answer number of hops, which is default by three. If you want to add a new channel, you can. Bluetooth configs, other device configurations here. The display, if you have it flipped upside down. If you want to connect it to your Wi-Fi, it will disable the Bluetooth connection, but you'll always be able to access it on your Wi-Fi then. You can type in your information there. If you want more position information here, you can turn this on or turn on the smart position broadcast. Otherwise, you can also program canned messages. You have also other external means of uh, notification. And this MQTT section is going to be an area that you'll want to use in the future to be able to connect to a server to talk with folks over the network. Right now, mesh networking is just going through and going peer to peer. MQTT gives you the ability for actually to be able to be archived and or to go across the internet. So kind of cool. With that, that's a quick tutorial of how to get up and running with iOS. Hope you like, subscribe, and if you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. We hope to see you at DEF CON and come participate in the Darknet contest. With that, this is Gator out.